Good morning, everybody. Welcome to PSG of Mercer County and happy Aloha Friday. For those of you visiting us for the very first time, you may be seeing a couple of Hawaiian shirts in the pictures, and that is not accidental. We do celebrate Aloha Friday uh, each Friday here and want to celebrate. Okay, so there's a background noise. Please just mute yourselves again. So we do celebrate Aloha Friday, which is good fun. And uh, what we also like to do is find, uh, I like to find interesting tips and, and information during the uh, each year and so each day of the year. So here's one, 67 years ago in 1953, Edmund Hillary and his Sherpa, his name was Tenzing Norgate, reached the summit of Mount Everest, over 29,000 feet high. And so it was uh, 67 years ago, they were the first uh, known to have done it and record it. Uh, it sits right on the border of Nepal and Tibet. That's where Mount Everest is. Uh, recently, about 800 people a year make the trip. Obviously, in 1953, they were the only ones. And if in case you're planning, I mean, we do have a lot of free time. It does take about three to four months for the whole trip. And of course, you have to be in good shape. So that's our little bit of history of the day. And uh, also want to let you know, we do have some background noise and it's a, a bit loud. So um, I do ask you, okay, there's that one. I'm gonna take a moment just to mute people. If you don't mute yourselves, I do have to do that. Yeah. And I ask that you do respect that and keep ourselves muted through the program because there is sometimes background noise that can be a little disruptive. So apologize about that. For those of you uh, new to our group or fairly recent, want to remind you, we do have a LinkedIn group. And our LinkedIn group is there to help you, anybody in a career transition. But our LinkedIn group is really just for people who have been to one of our meetings, whether in person or now virtual. Uh, our LinkedIn group, it's a private group. It's just for us, anyone who's been in our group before. But we have over 1,500 members in our LinkedIn group, and those are all people that have been through our program before. So what's nice about that is there's a very good chance that when you are doing your job search and you find someone in our group that may be able to help connect you to someone of interest for you or a position of interest, there's a good chance if you reach out to them, they will respond to you because uh, they've been through this process before. It's not new to them and they understand the value of connection. So it does increase your opportunity to, to connect with people. It's a great place for you to share information. You may get one of those emails for a terrific job, but it's just not right for you. But if you know it's a terrific job, post that. Let someone else have that opportunity to see it. You may be helping someone that's kind of paying it forward. And so uh, uh, do, do participate. You can share articles. You can share job leads. If you hear about um, uh, meetings that are happening, a lot of most meetings now are still virtual, but you may want to send those links along. Uh, or just let someone know that you liked something that you read. Terrific way to stay active and relevant on LinkedIn. We do also have our website. It is psgofmercercounty.org, psgofmercercounty.org. We have over 120 pages of content on our, on our website right now. One of the pages we have, well, it's a lot of pages, are our job boards pages. Our job boards pages cover um, uh, the Mercer County area or Mercer County and the six border counties. And what we have are not job postings, but we have links to companies that have jobs in those areas. And uh, uh, we do have a couple of people that are working on that, uh, keeping that current and active. We've been adding companies all along. And so we're going through a process now of providing more new companies uh, as we find them. So go take a look at the job boards page. Uh, uh, there. Um, you know, it's not going to be links to like the fast food places because we all know those around. These are companies that are typical that you may not know of. It's a great way even make a targeted list. You may not even realize the companies that do have jobs in Mercer and the six border counties. And as we like to tease, even if you come from overseas in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, crossing the mighty Delaware, uh, yes, we do uh, have positions there or companies listed there because uh, Mux is a border county to Mercer. One thing that we always like to do, and we just can't do it as readily right now, is something we call 
um, celebrations. We like to celebrate landings. And it's a little bit hard right now because it's virtual and we can't really do that as effectively. Um, but I um, want to let you know that one of our friends and members, uh, Joanna Maluska, she landed recently. She's in healthcare management. And so uh, let us know that she landed uh, not too long ago. If you have a landing and it's, it's new and you'll be starting soon, or maybe you've started and you're able to work virtually, which is why you're attending, um, let us know in chat. And I'll try and let people know a little bit later. We are going to use chat for Q&A, the chat in the upper right corner of the screen, the GoToMeeting screen, there are a couple of icons there. One has a couple, it looks like a couple of people, that's showing you everybody who's on the uh, virtual meeting right now. And to the right of that is like a little cartoon or comic book bubble, and it may have a number there of the number of chats that are there. So if you've recently landed, uh, you want to uh, tell us about that, that's fine. Or maybe if you had any recent interview that was successful, this is still a terrific time to be active in your job hunt. Yes, the unemployment is very high, the highest it's been in many, many years in terms of excuse me, unemployment rate. But a lot of people I've talked to have given up. They're saying they're waiting for the job market to get better. But some industries are still hiring in New Jersey. Um, around healthcare and pharmaceuticals certainly are, manufacturing certainly is. There's some other industries as well that are adjusting to being um, remote offices. So do stay active. And if you've been interviewing, uh, yeah, put a post out there on our chat. Uh, some people will read that as well. It'll help uh, let us know that you are successful, you are being active. So that could be helpful as well. So I just want to let you know a couple of ground rules in a moment as I get ready to introduce Beth and turn the meeting over to her. And that is, um, yes, we are using uh, GoToMeeting. I will ask that you remind you, keep yourself mute. Uh, I will be keeping myself mute and then checking the participants. If I hear any background noise, I will be muting you. I will do my best not to mute Beth because uh, she has a lot of important things to say. Um, you can keep your video on, you can keep your video off, it's your choice, whatever you want to do. And uh, also, um, Beth will have a break point, at least one in the middle of the presentation, plus at the very end, that will be an opportunity to ask questions. And use the chat in the upper right, that little cartoon bubble box, um, use that for uh, writing a question or entering a question. And, you know, maybe she's in a slide, but she can't take the break right now. If that's when you have the question in mind, write it down. And uh, we will be going over the questions uh, in the middle of the program and then the remainder ones at the end of the program. And I also ask, uh, minimize chat. Try not to use it a whole lot just to say hello to everybody. And I appreciate you want to stay in touch, but I, I'm also wanting to make sure I don't accidentally skip over any questions because I'm skipping through some of the greetings. Um, it's just a little bit helpful to me. So I appreciate your enthusiasm, but we want to make sure that we also can address everybody's questions. So use chat for questions, keep your microphones off, keep your smiles on, and we will get ourselves started right now. And I'm just so pleased to welcome and welcome back our speaker this morning, Beth Fitzgerald. Beth is a graduate of Rutgers University with a double major in economics and English. She started her career on Wall Street working for a small hedge fund, then Prudential, and finally the Oppenheimer Funds. She left Wall Street to raise her four children. Six years ago, she re-entered the workforce, opening her own executive coaching practice, serving both individuals as well as corporate clients. Most recently, she published her first book, The Wake Up Call, Daily Eye-Opening Motivation to Live Your Best Life. I've got a copy right here. I'm waiting for her to sign my copy. In addition to being public, a published author, Beth is a certified life coach, a certified John Maxwell coach, a master EFT practitioner, a positive EFT practitioner, a speaker, and a trainer. So PSG of Mercer County is always pleased to welcome the life coach, Beth Fitzgerald. David, thank you so much. I'm just going to keep my camera on for a, a couple seconds here, and then we're going to go to the slides. But I'm really excited to be here with all of you today. And um, although I have absolutely spoken about stress before, I believe I've probably been coming to PSG since maybe 2015. Maybe this is my fifth time visiting you. Uh, I, I've spoken about this before. Um, it's now 
the most requested topic that I talk about. And one thing that uh, that you may have heard in David's introduction is that I'm a master EFT practitioner and a positive EFT practitioner, which is energy work. And it's all um, in today's capacity, it's going to be about stress that I'm going to share that with you. And very rarely do I get to go in front of 64 people currently on this program and talk about energy work. Uh, being having my Wall Street background, people are, are usually kind of um, you know energy. What's that? And we're going to talk about that today, so you understand what it is. It's not it's not a Red Bull. It's not caffeine. It's about how. Um, negative emotions manifest in your body. And uh, and we're gonna do an exercise at the end. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, so at this point, I'm gonna turn off my uh, camera so that you're not looking at me and that you're looking at the slides and, uh, and we'll have a little more focus. We'll get rid of that one. So I'm gone. Okay. Um, what I wanna share with you right now uh, as we begin to talk about how to manage and reduce stress, before we even go there, I'm just gonna ask you, to close your eyes for a second. And I, I want you to get comfortable in your seat wherever you are. And I also want you to, while you're in this seat and your eyes are closed, and, and I want you to begin breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. And we're gonna do the breathing technique later, but for right now, I just want you to do a couple things. I want you to clear your mind of whatever it is that you have in your mind. And if you're like me, you're thinking of all the things you need to do today. And uh, you know, do you have the hour to, to sit on this call with me and talk about stress? You may be saying, I'm fine, I'm fine. Uh, you may be thinking of things that need to be done either now or over the weekend. I just want you to forget about those. For one hour, the, the beauty of, of um, worry is this. Uh, we can't do anything about those things right now. And so I'm asking you just to let them go. And this is a technique that, that is, um, is helpful in reducing stress in being able to say, what can I handle now? What do I need to handle now? What is imperative that I handle now? And what just needs to wait? And if it needs to wait, which is what we're gonna do right now, we're gonna say, okay, I'm coming back to you in an hour or an hour and a half. But for right now, I'm just gonna let you go. Uh, think of yourself as you as your eyes are closed and you think of your mind and maybe you think of it as an incredibly full mind. I want you to just think of uh, taking a broom to it and sweeping it out. Have you ever swept anything out and it became incredibly clean and clear? I want you to do that right now. And, and again, I just want you to breathe in through your nose. I'm going to have you open your eyes in a second, but um, I just want you to think of a couple things. In this pause, I want you to breathe. Breathing is so incredibly important. I, I want you to know that everything is going to be okay because it always is. Eventually, it always is. We've been through times like this before, maybe not a pandemic, but we've been through stressful times before and we came out on the other side and we will come out on the other side of this. Everybody says we're in the same boat. We're not in the same boat, we're in the same storm. And just know that we're all in the same storm and eventually the storm is going to calm down and it's going to end. And as you continue to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, I want you to think of what peace looks like for you. Breathe peace in through your nose and out through your mouth. What does it mean for you to have well-being? Breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And lastly, I want you to think about gratitude. What does gratitude mean for you? And I think when I think of gratitude, I think of, um, I think of uh, PSG. How long has David Shuckman and team been doing this, right? They've been doing this for so many years and they come every Friday prepared and ready to go. And so I know that we're all, all of us are grateful for PSG. And so with that, I'm gonna have you open your eyes and I'm gonna ask you to just give me one second because for whatever reason, my presentation just went away. So we're gonna find it again. 
see if she can handle this stress. I can handle this stress. It's okay. If you can watch me do this. We're all going to be fine. Yeah. And I don't know how this happened, but it's all right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Did everybody enjoy that? Go ahead, David. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's your Google Slides. That's right. Where are my Google Slides? There they are. Right there. Sorry. Woo woo. And We'll do this again. Maybe I let it sit too long. I don't know. And let's do present. The presentation was doing the exercise. Exactly. It said, I'm going to shut down too. I hope you enjoyed that. I really just wanted to center you so that we can be in this place of relaxation because that's what this whole presentation is about for you today. Now we're going to start out and I'm going to tell you some, some uh, maybe disturbing statistics about uh about stress but i share it with you because what happens when i talk about stress is people say uh-huh 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 and then they don't do anything about it but it's important for you to do something about it because it's impacting your health and and the the one thing that i want you to take away from today is stress is very often called the you know, the, the invisible killer or the silent killer because we don't know it's a problem until it's a problem and we know we're stressed out, but we don't think it's manifesting in our body yet. So we say, okay, we're good, we're fine, but are we? Are we really fine? And, and I would argue, given what you're about to find out about stress, that we're not fine, okay? We're not fine at all. And everybody, prior to um, this pandemic, people wore stress like a badge of honor. They, they were proud of it. They were proud of, uh, you know, excess work and very little time for fun and relaxation. And so now I hope that people are realizing in this pandemic that it has to be dealt with. It has to be handled. It has to be managed. And it's something that I manage every single day. I, David, what, what David didn't share in the bio is that I am married and have four children and two dogs and I'm running my own business. So, so I hear you when you say, you know, I'm definitely stressed out. Me too. And, and I do at least three things every day to reduce my stress. So having said that, let's get started and we'll go see if we can keep this, uh, this slideshow going. So most of you are familiar with this picture. If you don't know exactly what it is, that's okay. But you know, you know that maybe it's in Greece. You might even think Rome, but it's in Greece. And you may have even been there in your life. So this is the Acropolis. You can see, I gave it away. The flag is in the picture. That's the Greek flag. And, um, and it's spectacular, right? As a ruin would be, it's spectacular. But I want you to take one little step back that is what we were just looking at. That is the Acropolis in the middle of Athens. And you can see in this very historic center on this rocky outcropping, uh, you know, almost as if it, you know, came up out of the middle of the earth, sits this very modern city, right? So it looks wildly different when you take a step back and, and you're looking at it from afar. No less beautiful, but, but definitely a different, uh, a, a different perspective. We're going to go to another picture. And if we were together, I would ask you, do you all know what this is, right? And, and most of you would say, absolutely, it's the Taj Mahal. Many people think that it's a castle, but it's not. The Taj Mahal is actually a um, mausoleum that was built for the, um, the ruler's favorite wife. Not his only wife, but his favorite wife. And, uh, and, and it's spectacular, as you can see. The, the white in this, as it sits next to the green grass, is absolutely spectacular. You can see all the people that are coming up to it to, uh, to experience the Taj Mahal. Um, but again, if you take a step back, let's take a big step back. And here we have the back of the Taj Mahal as it, as it abuts the river and the river if i'm pronouncing it correctly is the yamanu river and it's filled with raw sewage it's disgusting really right but when you look at that other picture when we go back to this one spectacular and wow not as pretty anymore um 
unbelievable uh, sewage that that resides in this river. And and it, as it backs so close to the river, the land is so soft around the Taj Mahal that you can no longer drive any vehicles up to it. You must access the Taj Mahal by foot because the ground is so soft. And again, it's because of where it sits, not necessarily because of the filth of the river, but completely different perspective, right? Like it, the Taj Mahal looks dramatically different from this vantage point. And then one last one, ah, the pyramids, right? With the iconic picture and the, the camels in the forefront. And if you've ever been there, how spectacular is that? I have never been to Egypt or to the pyramids. But again, we're gonna take one step back and I think you kind of know where we're going on this one now. Okay, so this is this is Cairo, right? And uh, and you would not think that those pyramids sit that close to the city. One of my favorite pictures uh, to tell this story, which I didn't have in my slide presentation today, is um, is from a Pizza Hut, and the person is in the Pizza Hut, and so Pizza Hut is written backward, right? Because it's on the outside of the building, and um, uh, and you're and you're so close, so close to the pyramids, which we all think when we see the pictures of the pyramids that they are way, way off in the desert. But in fact, they're very, very close to the city. So I share all these pictures with you, not to say anything disparaging about the Acropolis or the Taj Mahal or the pyramids of Egypt, but to say perspective changes everything. And and that's what I want to share with you today is. If you don't have the proper perspective on stress and you aren't taking it seriously, then well, number one, I, I want you to begin to take it seriously. And, and number two, I want you to have a different vantage point um, based on what I'm gonna share with you today so that you will look at it differently and you will not only take it seriously, but, but you will share what we learned today with those around you, with those, the ones you love. Because although we say we are fine, a fine, I always say when I meet a client and they say I'm fine, I, I love it because I know they're so not fine. When you're really good, you don't say I'm fine. When you're mad at your husband or your spouse, when you say I'm fine, you're so not fine. And so in the middle of a pandemic, if you say you're fine, I'm going to challenge that and say, are you, is anybody, is anybody really fine? Are we good? We have a lot to work through on this and we're all working through it in our own way and there are ups and downs and we're gonna talk about that today. So I want to get started on things that I'm gonna share with you today. I wanna to share with you five simple, powerful ways to reduce stress. And as I said before, I really want you to take this seriously and say, I, I, I vow now that I will walk away from this presentation and I will begin doing at least one thing that's on here that I am not currently doing. I told you, uh, of the things that I share with you, I do all of them. Do I do all of them every day? No. Do I do at least three of them every day? Absolutely. I take what, the, what I know stress is doing to my body seriously, even though it may not have manifested itself yet in a, in a way that I see it or feel it. And we're going to talk about how it manifests in just a second. So let's get started on number one. I want you to own your health. I want you to be, be cognizant of the fact that things are working against you with stress that you may not see, you may not feel, you may not know yet, but surely on every stressful thing that happens to you, your body is impacted. I will give you a statistic from um, uh, HeartMath. Not sure if you're familiar with it. It's a another breathing uh, technique that you can do with a. They have a little apparatus that that monitors your heart rate as you breathe. But but they did uh, some tremendous research on uh, stress. And one of the things they said was when a stressful event happens to you. So whatever it is, uh, say you know you're driving. We're all in Mercer County or there, thereabouts. Say a deer runs in front of your car, which is common for all of us, right? We slammed on the brakes. We didn't hit the deer. Nothing happened. No one really got hurt, but you know, your heart is pounding. Maybe you're breathing heavy. We've all been in that situation. That event released 1,400 chemicals into your body. 1,400 chemicals. Now, they're your chemicals. They're not outside chemicals, but they're chemicals nonetheless, and they're all not good for you. You know, we have this fight or flight part of our body and it was supposed to help us for, for a random, rare, occasional saber-toothed tiger. It wasn't for it to happen hourly. 
It wasn't for it to be repeated over and over again. So, so number one, I want you to own your health and accept what stress is, the damage that stress is doing to your body on a daily basis. Hear some background noise, but we're so good. So uh, again, if we were in person, I would say to you, what are we looking at here, right? We're looking at, uh, maybe you, it's obvious, these are marathon runners. They're not just regular runners. These are marathon runners crossing the bridge in New York. Now, what do we know about marathon runners? Uh, let me share some of the things again. That These are things that I would ask you if we were in person and one day again, we are gonna be in person. What, what do you know about a marathon runner? Well, number one, they pace themselves. It's critical that they pace themselves. You cannot sprint a marathon, okay? They, they run it very quickly. These guys look like they're, they're some of the best. They do run it very quickly, but they don't sprint it. They have a pace. Maybe this is a seven mile pace, right? Seven uh, minute mile pace, good for them. Amazing, but they will run their pace. They know how to pace themselves through a marathon. Number two, they prepare. Nobody walks up without any preparation and, and walks to the starting line of a marathon and says, I, I can do it. No, no one would ever do that. You nor I would walk up. Most of us won't even walk up to the line of a marathon if we're being truthful. And, and that was definitely truthful for, that is definitely truthful for me. But even a regular race, you wouldn't walk up without any form of preparation. Now, I'm just gonna pause for a second. And, and make sure that we're all aware of the metaphor that I'm planting here. The marathon is our life. It's the life we're living. And so when we go back to the first two things I talked about, I'm talking about pacing yourself because it's a marathon, not a sprint. I'm talking about preparing for these stressful events because we're in a marathon, not a sprint, and this is our life. What else? Well. Marathon runners will always treat their body like a temple. Why? Well, truthfully, the only thing that will really get them from the starting line to the finish line is the body. That's the only thing that, that's required. They could take off their shoes. They could take off their, their, their um, equipment, i.e., you know, their, their running shorts and shirts. That, that, it might be fabulous and it might be wicking sweat away and keeping them cool, but, but it's not gonna get them across the finish line without their body. So they treat their body like a temple leading up to it. I assure you, these guys are not eating tasty cakes leading up to the marathon. They're feeding their body really good stuff really good protein, really good vegetables, really good fruit, maybe even some supplements. But they're taking care of their temple. They have one vessel and they take that vessel very seriously. And the same is true for us. We have one vessel. We've been given one vessel to go through this life with. And we need to take it seriously. We need to look at what stress is doing to our body and we need to make sure that we are taking proper precautions. And then in some cases, we weren't able to prevent the stress, but now we're gonna have to counteract it. And there's things that we can do for that to, um, to counteract stress as well. So they are nourishing their body. And clearly, as I spoke of before, they are, they are dressing appropriately so that nobody's there in, in a, you know, a, a winter sweatsuit or a winter coat. No, they have a long way to run. They would never do that. That would not be healthy for them. It would be really hard. It would make the run really, really hard. I'm gonna share a, sh a short story with you about my daughter. Um, I have four children and one has already graduated from college. She was our firstborn and she was an incredibly type A overachiever. So in high school, there wasn't anything that she didn't say yes to. She was on student council. She was National Honor Society. She had an internship with Rush Holt. Some of you are in Rush Holt's uh, backyard over there. Um, she uh, uh, was in theater. She was in sports. She was a straight A student. Like you name it, she was doing it. And, and it was unhealthy, 
unhealthy. When I tell you burning the candle at both ends doesn't even begin to describe what this child did to herself. We were not supporting that. We were saying, no, Devin, it's not, that's not okay. It's too much. It's too much. No, I need this. I need this for my college application. I need this for my college application. And so um, anyway, she graduated and, uh, and went on to George Washington University in Washington, DC. And after a couple of years down there, we were talking and I can't remember what we were discussing, but she said to me, mom, you know what? I just want all of me to graduate from college because all of me did not graduate from high school. And, you know, I, I can't say that without getting choked up because literally she let stress just overtake her at, at what cost, right? You know, she ended up going to George Washington University. It was a great university. She graduated. She's working for a great company right now. But but she she took on stress beyond comprehension. And so I want you to to take that phrase, I will say, uh, or sentence that my daughter said to me, I want all of me to graduate. And I want you to apply that to you and your life. I apply it to my life every day. I want all of me to get through this pandemic. I want all of me to live a good life. Um, and so uh, I just share that with you because that's a personal story. And I, and I hope that this metaphor resonates with all of you. Uh, on how important it is to reduce our stress. So where does it manifest in you? Where, how, does, how does stress manifest? Well, as I go through this, I want you to think of the ways that it manifests most in you. For many of us, it will be with our brain. We can't think right. People talk about brain fog. Maybe you get irritable or, um, or anxious. So think of, uh, think of, how it would manifest in your brain. Um, it might make you sad, it might make you unhappy, it might make you grumpy. Second thing is hair. Has anybody had thinning of their hair or, or even loss of hair? Uh, I know my girls, when they get stressed, their hair starts to get nice and thin and brittle. Uh, obviously with our heart, it definitely impacts our heart and, and we will learn later that um, to the point of uh, heart disease, Stress, if stress goes on long enough, it can manifest itself as heart disease. There are, stress manifests, manifests itself in our blood, in our skin. Have you ever had uh, any form of eczema or dry skin, any form of dry skin or your nails getting brittle? It will manifest on your skin and on your body. Maybe you're bruising more easily or, um, or uh, again, the, the eczema is a very common sign of stress. It taxes our kidneys and other organs, muscles and joints. Now, this is probably one of the biggest ones. How many of you have had a pain in your neck or a pain in your shoulder or maybe in your elbows or your hips? All of those are signs, uh, can be signs of stress. Uh, for me, I, I definitely always get it in my shoulders and, um, and I always feel it uh, often in my stomach. Uh, down to our intestines, that gets to constipa constipation and bloating. Hormones, I already talked to you about what happens with the release of the chemicals or the hormones in our body when we get stressed. Uh, again, it, it could have varying different degrees of impact on our hormone and, uh, and down to bodily fluids. So if you wanna throw anything in the chat right now of where it manifests in you, um, if it's always in the same place or maybe just think about it, does it always manifest in the same place? Where do you see, when you know this is happening to you, when you know stress has, has not only been a part of your life, but now it's starting to physically manifest in your body, where do you feel it? Where do you feel it most? Where do you see it? And when you know that, is that a signal for you to start taking care of yourself? What, we're, what I'm arguing here is, I don't want it to manifest in your body first. I, I wanna get it well before it manifests in your body before you get the pain in the neck or the shoulders, or before you have eczema on your skin, or before you get a pounding headache? Can, can we catch it before then? So we have a couple. Um, one gentleman, Peter, said sometimes he gets hives. Hives, absolutely. That's absolutely an indication of stress. Um, Benita said sometimes a stiffness in the neck and upper back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also very common. Uh, and I'll get into a book that some of you may want to, to look at. Um, actually, I'll, I'll bring it up now. What's the last one, David? 
uh, uh, Juliet, in my upper body on the left side. In my upper body on the left side. Okay, so the left side is the feminine side, and uh, I'm assuming she means in her shoulder or upper back, right? And the shoulder is an indication symbolically that we're shouldering too much. So I'm going to I'm going to take a, a, a brief little break here, David. Thanks for sharing this with me. Uh, if you and, I'll, and I have the book with me now, so I'll, I'll show it to you at the end. But there's a book called You Can Heal Your Life. And it and it talks about the symbolic meaning of where everything manifests in the body and why this is more Eastern medicine than Western medicine. And it's not in place of Western medicine. It's just a, a nice indication of hey, why is this happening to my body? Symbolically, again, from an Eastern standpoint, not a Western standpoint, but um, but together, I think it's uh, important to use both. And I'll, I'll share that at the end. I have it with me right now. Thank you for sharing those, uh, those indicators when you know. And now you know, I would like to get that before, imagine that, before I get hives. I'd like to to handle that stress before it manifests in my neck and I'm starting to put Bengay or some other form of ointment on your neck so that it has full rotation or or in your shoulder blades. And obviously, if any of you uh, love to get a massage, those are out of the question right now. So we might as well do what we can to prevent it from happening in the first place. I wanna share, um, these three types of stress with you so you understand uh, what the three, type, three types of stress are. First is acute, and that's um, negative thoughts for recent or upcoming events. So that would definitely be uh, a global pandemic would fall there. Episodic is, um, it's kind of the type A worrier. So that's people who are living in chaos or crisis. Um, it would be someone who is uh, an overachiever or someone who's, incredibly competitive. I don't want to say that you bring that on yourself, but to a certain extent uh, you do. And I would absolutely uh, put myself in that category uh, occasionally, if not permanently. And then last is chronic. Chronic is long-term stress. And that would be um, maybe uh, long-term poverty or abuse or something like that. Most people don't experience chronic stress as much as they do as acute which is the now and episodic, which would be more of a type A warrior. So the nine symptoms of stress, let's look at these and see if any of them resonate with you. We're gonna go through them quickly because we already did the body. Anxiety, depression, digestive problems. I, I definitely get those. Headaches, tension headaches, stress headaches. They're called that for a reason. Muscle tension, heart disease, sleep problems. Sleep problems are so prevalent right now. They're actually calling it, they're, they're equating it to the pandemic directly that people are having a very difficult time sleeping through the night and waking up in panic attacks. So if that is you, that is that is absolutely a thing right now. And we wanna make sure that, that we do what we can to, to mitigate that because losing sleep, sleep is so critical, so critical to your health. Uh, some of you may be experiencing weight gain that may be stress related, or it might be just the fact that that you're home and have access to your, your kitchen on a regular basis, uh, like I do uh, over here, maybe gained a few pounds. And then memory and concentration imp impairment. Maybe you felt that. I definitely have had some, some uh, uh, experiencing, I definitely experienced that during, during the pandemic. So. Number two is attitude. And, and I, am, I am not saying this in any trite way, like, oh, you should have a good attitude. Uh, not at all. I just wanna point out with attitude that it is under our control at all times. And so I want you to think about attitude in this framework. We are responsible for our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions, right? And so if, we, if that is our circle of responsibility, we have the opportunity every day to decide what thoughts we think, what feelings we get from them, and what actions we take. And so I want you, I'm, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this, but I want you to think of a thought that you've had recently. Maybe it's related to the virus. What feeling did it manifest in you? maybe anxiety or fear, right? And then what action did you take on that? So if this, is, this is classic going down the rabbit hole if you want or not. And, and again, it's our decision. So if we say, okay, let's think about 
the, the pandemic, absolutely. Possibility of catching the coronavirus, it's a possibility. Feelings in me, fear, actions. The only action that you're capable of being in control of is the fact that you use every precaution possible. After that, there's nothing more you can do. Worrying about it isn't gonna make it better and it's certainly not gonna make you more uh, resilient to a virus. You, you take all the proper precautions and say, I've done what is necessary. I've made myself safe. And now going down the rabbit hole of thinking and, and worrying and fearing, which we're gonna talk about in a, in a couple minutes, isn't necessarily making us feel any better. It's certainly adding to our stress and it didn't make us safer. Worry doesn't make you safer. Worry makes you more worried. Our greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. So in that previous example that I just gave you, what's a better thought? Please tell me what a better thought would be. If you're not putting it in the chat, at least write it down for you. Is a better thought, I've taken every proper precaution. I've been incredibly responsible. I am respectful of other human beings. All of those things are, are a better thought because just like stress being invisible, so is this virus. So we have to come up with really powerful thoughts to remind ourselves about how careful we're truly being. Number three is awareness. And it's gonna, I went through number two quickly because number three doubles down on what we just talked about. I want you to be aware that there are three places that you can reside in your mind. One is the present, one is the future, and one is the past, okay? Now, here's the important thing for you to know. Obviously, you know that we're gonna tell you that the present is the best place for you to be, but I wanna talk to you about the past and the future so you know where we all go from time to time. The past is where regret and anger and sadness reside. When we go back to the past, there are things that we, we can't change, but we can go back and stew over them or say, oh, why did I do that? Or why didn't I do this, right? Have you had those moments where you said uh, in, a, in a moment of regret, I wish I had, that's the past. Now go to the future. The future is where anxiety, worry, and fear reside. And so we've all done that, right? Well, what about, what if, what if I catch the virus? What if, you know, I, whatever your scenario is. You know, for my daughter, it would be, what if I don't get into the best college? All of these things are in the future. And then the present is where peace, joy, and happiness reside. And so we want to be in the present as much as we possibly can. Right now, you are in the present. When you first got on this call, that's in the past. If you left your microphone on, it's in the past can't do anything about it now. We cannot change it. Same thing with the future. You can't change it. You can't put your, your camera on in the future. When we get to that point, you can put your camera on, but you can't put it on. You can't go to the future now. That's not possible. So in the present is where peace, joy, and happiness reside. And so when we go to the future and we go to this place of worry, it doesn't, it doesn't make us any safer it doesn't make us any more secure. It doesn't change anything. It just allows us to worry. And same thing with the past. When you go to the past, you can't change the past. It is what it is. So to sit in it is a thought process that's gonna allow you to go to some, some negative places. But knowing that you can't change it might help you go back to the present and say, if I can just sit in the present. You know, I had a call yesterday and, uh, and it was uh, with a friend of mine and, and the call wasn't great. And, and so for a couple hours, I would say afterwards, I perseverated on that call. And then finally I had to snap out of it and say, wait, you did the best you could. You were, you were there, you were on time, you, you gave what you could possibly give to your friend but there's no way to change it. So I need to let this go. Everything's gonna be okay. But to sit in the past wasn't helping me and it was just stressing me out and I couldn't change it. 
So I hope that's helpful to you. And when you think about, when you go to places where you begin to worry, I want you to come back to the present. You can do that breathing exercise we started out with and just get yourself to the present. What is, what is around me that's present? Be grateful for what you see around you. If you can come to the present and, and go to a place of gratitude, it's an incredibly centering moment and a, a, a technique and exercise to do to bring you to the present. I love this. If it can't be solved, there's no need to worry. I'm sorry, if it can be solved, there's no need to worry. And if it can't be solved, worry is of no use. Worry is of no use. It's one of those things, you know, oh well, I can't change that. Then don't worry about it. Like I said about that call, I can't change it. It happened. It's water under the bridge. I cannot change it. So worrying about it isn't gonna make it any better. It's just gonna add stress to my life and I don't wanna add any more stress. And I had to consciously choose a better thought. And at that point, it is a, a little bit of talking to yourself. You have to choose a better thought. And it's a, it's a little bit of a conversation. But if you can say this quote to you, if it, can be, if, if it can be solved, there's no need to worry. And if it can't be solved, worry is of no use. So here, is number four, tools and strategy, strategies to reduce your stress. When I began this presentation, I told you that there are a number of things I do every day. So let me share with you what uh, the tools and strategies I'm exposing you to. Hopefully some of them you're already doing. If you're not, maybe you will uh, entertain doing them. Um, and, uh, and maybe I, I can give you new ways of uh, reducing your stress. So number one is meditation. I hope some of you are doing meditation. If you're not, I, I, and I'm gonna give you a slide in a second that's gonna show you how powerful meditation is, but it is the single most important thing I can share with you and tell you how powerful it is. People always think of meditation that, that it means that you're sitting in Indian style and, and you're, you're silent in the kind of om space for an hour or more, like a monk. That, that is not true, or at least that's not true for me. I do a guided meditation. I don't sit in silence. I do a guided meditation where someone guides me through it because that works for me. My meditation is 10 minutes long and, and I use Calm. And I'll show you a bunch of different meditation apps that, that you can use. Um, meditation is incredibly powerful. It is, again, back to being present. It is you quieting the mind. Your mind receives the equivalent of 172 newspapers in any given day. That's incredible. That, that is nowhere near if you go back, you know, say into the 80s or 90s when there, there wasn't all of this influx of data and information coming at you nonstop. Uh, we were in a much more peaceful place. We're not in that place anymore and we're not going back to that place. So meditation is incredibly powerful. If you're not doing it, I, I can't implore to you more that it's something that you should consider. And if sitting still thinks, you know, the thought of sitting still is unimaginable, then you can do a walking meditation. Yoga is a form of meditation to a certain extent, but, but meditation is really important. I'll get back to that in a second. Breathing, I'm gonna give you the breathing exercise today. You did a breathing exercise when we first started. It is incredibly powerful. Some of you have it on your, your watches or your Fitbits. I, I really encourage you to do deep breathing every day. Uh, putting white space on your calendar, there may be more white space on our calendar than before, but, but your day should not be packed. If you're, if you're searching, as David said, with all the things that are available to you, at some point I hope you find white space. I hope you find an opportunity to get out and get fresh air, get some form of uh, sunshine. Uh, as I always say, let the sun find your face on every given day. Stop worrying, we already talked about that. That is, that is living in the future and, uh, and it, it serves zero purpose. Uh, what did someone, someone described it like a rocking chair. A lot of work and you get nowhere. Uh, gratitude, I started off the presentation with gratitude, being grateful for PSG, PSG and all that they do and have done for so many years. Think of all the things that you can be grateful for every day. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, the air conditioner is blowing up. And I'm, I thought, wow, I'm grateful for air conditioning. I'm grateful that I'm with you. I'm grateful that there's 
there's go to meeting that we can be on this together and that this didn't have to stop because of the pandemic. There's so many things for you to be grateful for. Uh, exercise. I'm not your doctor, so so please confirm with your doctor that you can do exercise. I put in Shinrin Yoku because it's an incredibly powerful tool of walking in the forest. It's called forest bathing. And now that we're allowed back in our parks, it's called forest bathing and you do it in silence. You walk through the, the park or the, the um, hike that you're on and you do it in silence and you're taking in all the sights and sounds of nature, which, which resides in the present just so you know, uh, there's nothing about nature that isn't present and uh, and it's incredibly powerful. Look it up if, if you wish, but uh, any form of getting out and walking and sunshine and exercise is good for the mind and it's good for reducing stress. And then of course, essential oils. The number one essential oil for reducing stress is lavender. It's been proven in um, blind studies. Uh, you can look at the research. I didn't bring it or share it today but but it's an incredibly powerful tool if you're into essential oils it's just another another thing i do all of those do i do i don't do shinrin yoku every day but i am getting some form of exercise i don't always have white space on my calendar but i try hard the rest of it i do every day i, I wake up every morning at 5 a.m and i do 15 minutes of prayer as well so if if that's something that interests you it's not meditation just keep that in mind but it is another form of stress reduction so this is what a scan looks like before and after meditation. Now, you can see that after meditation, we have a much calmer mind. It's all more um, uh, blue and black, whereas the other one, it looks almost inflamed with the red and the yellow and the orange. Uh, that, I just want you to know, is not after two hours of meditation. That scan was taken after 10 minutes of meditation. 10 minutes of meditation. So I strongly encourage you to consider meditation and make it a part of your daily practice. Here's some meditation apps. I, uh, I believe I already told you that I use Calm. Um, the, the one with just the face is a relax and rest. Uh, I don't use, and the one on the far right is the walking meditation that I use. And it's, uh, I think it's 16, 17 or 18 minute walking meditations and it gives you uh, a way to be present by noticing things on your own body or things in nature that you're seeing or hearing or feeling. Uh, again, changed my life. A lot of people use Headspace. I was not a fan of Headspace, but but a lot of people like it. So if that's your thing, um, then check out Headspace. But I really, really like Calm. This is our intermission and then we're going to do a 10 minute exercise. So if uh, you have to go to the bathroom or get a drink. I'm just gonna tell you this before you leave. The next part is gonna be a breathing exercise. It's gonna be no longer than 10 minutes. Um, so I want you to be in a space where you're comfortable, in a space where it is quiet and you won't have an interruption and that you can sit and, and listen to me and do some breathing for about five or six minutes or so. So uh, here's your intermission and I will take questions at this point and I'll put my uh, camera back on. So I've been looking at this uh, looks like um, you were asking people for making some comments. Rosalind made one, I believe, towards attitude. Uh, she makes a realistic next step that she can do today. So I think that was in response when you were talking about attitude. Okay, good. Yeah, attitude's okay. important. Uh, Frank is asking, what about worrying about older relatives? Right. So it goes back to can you do something about it or can't you? If there's something you can do, if they're not in a safe place and there's something you can do, do you need to get groceries delivered to their house or do you need to um, go visit them through the window? All of that is actionable steps and I encourage you to do that. But if you mean, and, and if you think they're doing something careless or irresponsible, then, you, then the most you can do is tell them and ask them to stop. But, but if it's just general worry about them and uh, either COVID or just general worry, you're not making them safer, you're not making them healthier, you're not doing anything on their behalf. So it's sen senseless. I, at this point, again, I'm an incredibly spiritual person, but at that point, if I still had angst over my parents, both of whom have passed away, so I don't have that, uh, I don't have that concern right now, but if that was my concern, um, and, I, and I couldn't get, let it go on rational thought of they are safe and, and I've given them everything that they can do and be to be safe, then I would give the rest to to God or spirit or universe or whatever you call it and say, can you help me 
not have this worry in my heart. Now, folks, you can look at the chat. Some people had some good ideas and they're sharing some things. Um, Doug is asking, can you remind us what was white space? Sure, I'm sorry about that. If your calendar, if you look at, uh, if you take a page out of your uh, out of your calendar and it is booked from sun up to sun down, there is no white space. So take you know every hour and take something out, and then that would be the white space where you say, okay, I gave myself thinking time. I gave myself, you know, I'm going to go for a walk here. Creating white space is when that your calendar is not booked. Okay. Uh, Bill is asking, don't you need to live in the future in order to plan and prepare? How do you avoid over planning? And that could be stressful. Uh, over planning can be stressful. Um, you don't have to live in the future. You can think about the future and then you come back to the present and say, what can I do now? So if it's, if it's applying for jobs or if you want to spend an hour on the internet scouring or if you want to do networking, all of that is, is about your future, but you're working on it now. It's the worrying of the future. It's the panicking about the future and, and creating a story about the future that isn't necessarily true. It's not true. It, it, it might come true. It might not come true. We don't know. But today, do what you can do about something that you want to happen in the future. Just don't live there in your mind. And what was the second part of the question? um how do you how do you avoid over planning uh, that's really hard to to answer because i i don't know exactly what this person is asking um if you're over planning meaning you're overbooking yourself then i'd go back to the white space comment if you're i i don't know that you can over plan if you're trying to plan out your future uh but if it seems overwhelming and you're getting stressed about it then it's clearly too much. Your body is telling you it's too much. Your body's a great indicator. If you will tap into that as a resource, your body will tell you on a regular basis how you're feeling. And, and, and that is the answer. You know, if you're feeling good about something, move forward. If you're getting, you know, the kind of the stop, the stress, then you have to rethink it. Okay. Um, Rosalind is asking, does decluttering help? Decluttering, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, what's the uh, what's the uh, woman's name who created the book on? Oh, I'm drawing a blank on her name right now. She wrote a great book. I read it and and I cleaned out my house. So yes, decluttering. If you can have a peaceful space that that you're working out of, I think it's incredibly important. Okay, um, Marie Kondo, someone. Marie said Kondo. That Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's from Scott. Um, yeah, I was too busy to Google it, so I'm glad Scott did that. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. I, I couldn't come up with her name. I literally took my entire closet and dumped it on my bed, like Marie Kondo <laughs> said. And Doug came in the room, my husband said, what happened? I go, it's okay. It's okay. It's going to be done by today. And it was. And, and my, my closet has remained pristine ever since. Oh, you're, you're welcome to come to my house and help me with my closets. <laughs> so another Doug just is asking, will the slides be on the PSG website? Yes, they will, along with all the comments in the chat and the video. We'll talk more about that later. So that's it with the comments. If you want to lead us through um, the next phase after the intermission, let's do that. Absolutely. So here we go. Uh, David, do you know how much time I have? Um, up to a half an hour. So oh, we'll be we'll be good. We're, we're perfect. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to get rid of me. Oh. Okay. Let's go down. Mm. There we go. Sorry about that, everyone. Okay. So we're going to talk about energy. And I told you in the beginning that I'm a master energy practitioner. And so we're going to talk about energy now. And I'm going to explain what it is. And then we're going to do this breathing exercise. So where do you fall on the energy scale? So this is the scale of consciousness. And you can see it's conical in shape. Okay. So uh, in, in the bottom is where our very lowest vibration is energetically. It is where uh, shame and humiliation reside. And then at the very top is enlightenment. So think of enlightened people. So it would be uh, the Dalai Lama, Mahatma Gandhi, um, uh, Jesus, whatever. It would be 
up here at enlightenment. There are people who, who nothing would ever bother them. They are peace and love personified at all times. Uh, humanly possible, but, but rarely attained. Then you go down to peace, love, joy, all of those great high vibration, high energy um, uh, for, uh, positions and places of consciousness. I share this in a conical shape because, because as you go down the cone, you can see that the, uh, the emotions on the left are becoming less desirable and then our vibration on that, uh, on that uh, emotion gets lower and lower and lower. Uh, on the right, you can see it says uh, from green and above, it's expansive and green and below is contracted. So think of right now, we're in a place of fear, right? Wouldn't you call that probably where we all are in the pandemic? And we have a vibration of 100, we're in a contracted state, and this is not where we're gonna do our best work. It, there's no way we can do our best work in this restricted and contracted state. And so how do we get ourselves out of that? How do we get ourselves to a higher level if we wanted to go up to even say courage? Courage used to be where when they when they tested America, courage used to be where the majority of Americans resided, just at 200, almost at that transition space where you're not necessarily contracted, but not necessarily expansive. Uh, I would imagine that in the middle of a pandemic, we're far lower than that now. And I would think that the majority of people are all residing at this 100 or lower, this lower level. So if you can think of moments when you were at any of these lower levels, I just want you, I don't want you to, to go there necessarily, but I want you to think about it. As a matter of fact, if you go to the lowest and you think of shame, all of us can think of a moment when, when we were ashamed of something that we did. But I just want you to think in terms of an emoji. If I asked you to, to send a shame emoji to me, what would you send? So, so most of you would grab one of the faces that was head down, eyes down, mouth down. If it had shoulders, shoulder would be kind of turned in. You can, you can picture that in your mind's eye, what shame is. And then now I want you to go all the way up to the top and I want you to think of um, enlightenment. Think of one of those enlightened people that I mentioned. Can you picture them? Would they be head down, shoulders down, eyes down, mouth down? Or would they be head up, shoulders up, arms out, open and expansive? That would be your image, right? So that, that's the top and the bottom of this. And I want you to kind of have a visual in your mind. And, and everything that happens in our life causes us to go up and down in this scale of consciousness. We're gonna do an exercise in a second. I'm gonna go to the next slide now. I just wanted you to have that as a framework of energy. And then we're gonna go into, um, my, there we go. We're going to talk. I'm going to go to the scale of consciousness in a second, but it's a negative, uh, subjective units of experience. We're going to use that from a negative 10 to a positive 10 when we do this breathing exercise. Okay. We're going to do this soften and flow technique right now. So let me tell you a little bit more as we get into this. And I hope you're, you're in a comfortable seat. You're, uh, in a room that is quiet. And, and this is my gift to you, uh, for stress for today. So uh, before I begin, I want to be crystal clear. I am not a therapist. You know, I, I mentioned that I am an energy practitioner, a master of energy, but I'm not a therapist. So when we're talking about energy, we're talking about uh, the energy in our body. So the energy that I'm going to work on today inside you and inside me is um, something that you're familiar with. Uh, we're all filled with energy. We're all vibrating. We all have a vibrational level. If I had, there are uh, actual meters that can determine the vibration of a human being, but you're familiar with energy. You are absolutely familiar with it. And I want you to think in terms of when you have been in a situation where you said, I don't like the vibe I'm getting from that person. Have you ever said that? Yeah, you've been in maybe a situation where you said, this person's making me feel incredibly uncomfortable maybe even unsafe. When you said, I don't like the vibe, what you said was, I don't like the vibration I am feeling from that person. 
It is, it is coming off of them and it's making you afraid or fearful. It might've happened in a parking deck or uh, at night in the dark. And you said, I don't like the vibe. You may have walked quicker or grabbed your friend and stayed closer, but, but you knew that you didn't like that, that vibration and you felt it in your body. And some would, e some would even say it was a sixth sense, right? Sixth in five, six, right? Sixth sense. And so now we're talking about your energy body. This is what we're talking about when you're talking sixth sense. Have you ever had another negative emotion like that had a physical manifestation? So, so like um, butterflies in your stomach. Have you ever made reference to butterflies in your stomach? Of course you did. Now, there aren't really butterflies in your stomach, right? Or have you ever said, oh, I had a lump in my throat. It was hard to swallow. But you didn't really have a lump in your throat. This is an example of stuck energy. So energy flows. When you say you were to go to a wedding and it was a wedding you were so happy to be at, energy would flow. You would remember that event, everything was good, it was all good. And then there are things that cause energy to get stuck. So stuck would be a, a, a situation where there was a negative emotion. So I want you right now to think of something, some negative event, that has happened in the last 24 to 48 hours in your life. And I want you to really put your finger on it. Uh, it. It could have happened just to you. It could have happened with someone in your house. Maybe there was an argument. Maybe there was something on a phone call. I told you I had an event on a phone call with someone yesterday uh, that I didn't leave feeling so great. So I want you to think about that event in the last 24 to 48 hours. And I want you to think of what that negative emotion was can you can you put your finger on what it was was it was it fear was it anger come to a conclusion at this point of what that event was what the negative emotion was and now i'm going to ask you this where do you feel that in your body i'm going to tell you where most people feel it when you're talking about an event like that, um, people feel it in their stomach. They'll feel it in their solar plexus. They will often feel it heavy on their chest or maybe over their heart, maybe up higher where it's harder to breathe. Some people will say, I feel it in my throat like I can't swallow. And occasionally I have people say they feel it in their head. So right now, wherever it is, wherever you are in your own space, I want you to just put your hand on wherever you feel this negative event, this negative emotion, this stuck energy as we're gonna call it. Okay, now that you know where you feel it in your body and you put your hands on it and you said, okay, it's my stomach or wherever you feel it, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. Nobody needs to answer them in the chat, you just need to um, answer them for yourself. So you, I want you to have these answers for you. On a negative 10 to positive 10, what is that event for you? What is that, that feeling that you feel in your body right now? Is it, um, and, and zero being neutral. So if it was a negative event, negative event, rarely would you be neutral on that. So it would, the number would presumably be somewhere between negative one and negative 10. When you have your number, you can write it down or just memorize what, what you know your number is right now. When you think of that event, when you go back to that event as if it was happening right now, what is that number for you? Now, wherever you feel it in your body, I want you to tell me, tell yourself really, what size is it? So for some, it'll be the size of a soccer ball. Maybe, maybe it's a grapefruit. How big is this? Um, stuck energy for you. Now I want you to ask yourself, does it have a color? Could be any color. Could be black, could be red, could be yellow. Does it have a color? Doesn't necessarily have to have a color. And does it have a texture is my last question. Does it have a texture? Is it hard? Is it dense? Is it rough? What is the texture? of this stuck energy. Okay, once you have all of those, now I'm gonna begin this breathing technique. And I wanna tell you a couple things before we start. 
One, we're talking about stuck energy. Energy is not negative. I know that that it may feel when you're when you're thinking about this event that that it's negative. Energy isn't negative. It's just stuck or flowing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get that energy to flow again by doing this breathing technique. Uh, but it's but it's never negative. So I don't want you to think that there's negative energy in you that you're trying to get. It's just stuck, and we want to move it. And you're going to move it. You're going to do the moving through the breathing. And then the second thing I want to ask you is where do you want it to leave your body? Now, wherever it is right now, let's just assume for me, uh, mine is in my stomach. Where can it leave? It can leave anywhere you want it to leave. So if, you, if you're a science person and you, you want it, you know gravity and you're saying, well, it has to, to leave via gravity, it would drain out. Maybe it would leave through your legs and through your feet. Um, maybe because it's breathing, you want to blow it out and, and we're going to be breathing and you can just blow the, the stuck energy out. Or maybe it, it comes out through your hands or it comes out through the top of your head. Wherever you want it to go, it will go, but I need you to figure out where you want it to go right now. And it may change during the exercise for you. I just want you to, to give it permission, to have permission to say, I want it to leave. I want it to be unstuck. So now we're ready to begin. I want you to sit back in your chair and I want you to get comfortable and I want you to close your eyes. I would like you to put your hands over your heart, your heart center. That has a very positive effect. And I want you to begin breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. Again, with your eyes closed, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth and just create a rhythm. I like to think of it in terms of a roller coaster. Breathe in and kind of go up the roller coaster. And as you breathe out, let the air out and slide down the roller coaster. But create a rhythm. And again, breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I want you to start thinking about this stuck energy, wherever it is in your body. Continue to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And I want you to think about making it smaller and smaller. The technique is called soften and flow. So as you breathe in, I want you to soften the energy. And as you breathe out, I want you to flow your energy. It's just energy. So as you breathe in and breathe out, just consider making it smaller and smaller. As you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, I want you to notice where the breath in stops and where the breath out begins. It's almost as if breathing has four stages. You breathe in and you stop and you breathe out and you stop. As you get in tune with this breathing, softening and flowing constantly, making this energy smaller and smaller. I want you to continue to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. But I want you to soften your mouth. And right now, I am going to be quiet for the next minute or so. Please keep your eyes shut. Continue to breathe. But I want you to enjoy the silence. If you find your mind traveling to another place or another thought, go back to following the breath in and following the breath out. I want you to continue to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. We're almost done. And right now, I just want you to take notice and check in with your body. Start with your feet. 
Maybe wiggle them around. And move up to your legs. Check in. Maybe move them around. Continuing to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you come into the center of your body, I want you to be cognizant of where your stuck energy was. Pay particular attention to that as you breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you come up to your shoulders and your neck, I want you to start moving your head and your shoulders around, checking in with what feels comfortable. And lastly, moving your neck and your head, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. I'm gonna ask you to take three more deep breaths in. And as you do, when you take that first deep breath in, I want you to breathe in deeply so that the air touches the very bottom of your lungs. And then I want you to exhale as strongly as you can through your mouth. And then I want you to do that two more times. Breathe in through your nose. Let that air touch the very, very bottom of your lungs. And then blow it out. And we'll do it one more time. Breathe in through your nose, bringing the air to the bottom of your lungs. And then exhale. When you're ready, you can start to open your eyes, coming back in touch with the screen. And I am now going to bring myself back onto the screen and check in. Um, I would love to open this up to David at this point and see if anybody has any questions. I'd love to hear how that breathing technique felt for you and whether it was helpful. Thank you, Beth. Yeah, so if you have a comment or question, you're welcome to do so right now in chat. We've got a few more minutes before we wrap up. So you're welcome to do so. David, I'm gonna ask you, since we're waiting for questions to come in, how was that for you? So Beth, I have a, 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 an admission to make, which is I'm terribly sorry. I was watching to make sure that no one was turning their microphones on. <laughs> I was doing the breathing and I, I felt my lungs very full. So I appreciate that, but I could not pay attention to the full program, I'm sorry. No worries, no, I appreciate that. I just figured I would ask you because you're the only face I can see here and I figured I could put you on the spot. Yeah, no, well, you can. You, if you want to see the other faces, um, the option on top, you can view everyone. It might say now who's talking. Uh, there are other. There are a few faces, I think, or maybe view active cameras. Oh, there are no active. Okay. Oh, there they are. Yep, active cameras. You'll see okay. the people. And uh, the good news is the active cameras. They all look awake. <laughs> okay. Good. So you've gotten them out Anybody? of uh, their relaxation. So Ashwin has written. Um, I've been practicing meditation for a while and totally agree that has been a great tool to reduce stress. Uh, Michelle has found this to be peaceful and relaxing. Vance, the same, very peaceful. Uh, uh, when Doug put his right hand on his chest, he felt the tension uh, release. Um, Fabulous. He's not sure about the feeling of leaving his body. This was, I'm sorry, this is scrolled up. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, I'm not sure about the feeling of leaving my body, but it was so relaxing. That's terrific. Thank you. Uh, Anna Maria, sharp pain in foot and neck and shoulder, uh, uh, upper back subsided, not as intense, and could fill lungs with more air deeply. Fabulous. Uh, Rosalind wrote, uh, the pressure went away, but the hand on the spot cramped up. <laughs> not really sure. <laughs> All right, so one one down, one to go. Uh, and some other nice comments. Uh, let's see, Tatiana, uh, I was good with beginning, feel big pain, 
but not so good, uh, not good at letting go, maybe needs practice. Sure, certainly. Fair enough. Starting. So uh, a, a lot of very positive and optimistic feedback. So this is all very terrific. And the people no, I can see on the camera seem all to be smiling, so that's good. Uh, you can only imagine <laughs> that the people who don't have their cameras on are smiling, but it's a bad hair day. Good, good. Um, very often people will say when they do energy work that they feel lighter. So I hope that I hope that um, all the participants who did it feel lighter. Uh, sometimes energy will move, so it will go. You know, I know someone said it was somewhere and it went it went somewhere else. Sometimes that happens. Usually it's uh, it's less when it moves to the second location. Um, and then also uh, the one thing I'd love to know is did anybody's did anybody or everybody's number go down, um, meaning less negative than when it started? So let's see if anyone wants to just reply to that question, just a moment. Yeah. And then we'll wrap up. Yeah, no worries. Uh, uh, yes, I think so, yes. Uh, another yes, wow. Okay. Beth will be here the next three weeks. <laughs> this was just too good. Yeah, David, if, if that's something, you know, I mean, we could do now that they all know what's going on. If anybody wanted to do, you know, a, a Zoom call and, and you wanted to schedule something that I, I, I guided the breathing, I, I would happily do that. You know, it would be my pleasure. It would be, you know, it'd be an honor to, to be a part and support your group during, um, during this pandemic. Uh, but it's incredibly powerful. It's a tool that, Quite frankly, I hesitated to use with my Wall Street um, executives uh, because it sounded a little woo-woo. But I, it's the most powerful uh, thing that I have ever come in contact with, and I use it all the time. It's super important, and and that's just one way. There are other there are other modalities within energy work, but um, I, I can't speak highly enough about it. There is one more question it's from Roslyn. What does the color purple mean? I'm assuming it's not your lips turning purple. <laughs> exactly. So there is no, there is no, uh, for this, there is no um, uh, right or wrong of what color. That's why I was like, a lot of people will say it's black. And then some people will say, well, wait, it's blue. Is that is that wrong? I'm like, no, no, just because it's stuck energy doesn't mean it has to be this ominous black color or that purple is a, is a better color. But um, purple is usually an incredibly spiritual color. I, I will, I will give you that. Okay, so I want to thank you once again, Beth. Uh, thank you so much. You, you know, I, I guess I've known Beth, we've known each other about six years or so. We first met and connected through Volunteer Connect a number of years ago, and I've always gotten a sense, you know, gratitude was one of the uh, comments or slides she had earlier. I've always had a sense of gratitude is just pervasive through you. It's just part of your being. You just always seem to be grateful uh, when working with other people, and so it's very genuine in Beth. Certainly. Thank you. Um, and, and, you know, in, in addition to managing stress, and, and Beth really helped us today learn ways to get on top of it or manage it, also understand that not all stress is bad. Some stress is helpful. We actually had a presentation by Kathy in uh, January. Stress can help us focus. It can help us react to apply our attention to something that's important. So sometimes managed stress can be helpful, but certainly we don't want it to be overwhelming at all. Um, I, I like the Dalai Lama quote that you had, and uh, when you had it there, I was Googling a little bit. There's a quote that I've heard, and it seems it's based on another quote by the Dalai Lama, but I always heard, and I would tell people that work for me, if you don't have a solution, then it's not a problem. And I think it goes similar to the, comment that Beth made about worry. Um, if it can be solved, there's no need to worry. And if it can't be solved, well, worry is no use. So um, when I had people working for me, if if they were concerned or worried about something, but there was no way to, you know, no way to fix it or make it go away, then let's, let's not worry about it. So I think I've been thinking about that a long time. And I did Google Dalai Lama has a quote based on that. I don't have the exact wording for that. I like that you shared some of the apps with us. And this has been such a relevant topic, a timely topic. Um, even Calm, the app, one of the apps that you mentioned, they now have a TV commercial, do nothing for 30 seconds. 
and then there's a little countdown clock and I think it's rain or waterfall in the background. So, you know, they're sharing their their thoughts with us as well. You know, this certainly can be a stressful time, not just job search, but with the pandemic and everything else that surrounds all that. So absolutely, the slides are online uh, right now. Uh, later today, I will put the chat sessions that you've all been contributing and sharing. If you need to go back to that, there may have been some people sharing information that you want to have. Um, also, the video will be up on our YouTube link, our YouTube channel, and there'll be a link uh, on our website. On our website, on the right side of every page, is a link called Meeting Presentation Documents. Meeting Presentation Documents. Click on that link, and a new page will open, and Beth's uh, program is right at the top there. You click on that, you get everything that you need. So slides are online, the video and the chat will be there later this afternoon. You are most welcome to join our LinkedIn group. I encourage you to do so. We've got uh, over 1,500 members from LinkedIn. And uh, with the LinkedIn group, I, as I mentioned earlier, I only accept people into our group, or I should say we do, who have been to one of our meetings. So you're welcome to send an email to me um, if you have my email address or to us at PSG, which is PSG of Mercer County at gmail.com, PSG of Mercer County at gmail.com. Just let me know that uh, you joined the meeting and that's why you're applying for LinkedIn. Because if I don't recognize your name or don't know you, if I can't find you in the in the log of people who joined, um, it'll just slow down the opportunity for me to approve you into our group. Um, so uh, just want to let you know you can do that. Um, we do have a YouTube channel. We have 10 or 11 videos there now from each of the uh, virtual presentations we've done since March 20th. You're welcome to go back and look at any of those there. I want to let you know what's coming up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, next week, I'm very excited. George Pace will be here. And uh, George was actually on our call today, which was nice. George will be talking about the future of work. And that's a big topic. And he's got a lot of insight into what may be changing, how he sees what's changing based on all the research he's done, whether it's an impact of the way offices are changing, the way of using technology differently, all sorts of things. He's going to share with us ways to get on top of uh, understanding the future of work. That's going to be spectacular. I hope you can come next week. Uh, again, all meetings are free to attend, of course, and no need to register in advance. So that's next week, June 5th. The following week is June 12th. Carrie Zumas is coming back, motivational speaker, and she'll be talking about the ABCs of success. She's got some terrific ideas. I've seen this program before. Terrific ideas about keeping us organized and focused. And by the way, George, who I mentioned a moment ago, he also does a live seminar each Sunday morning that you could check. It's on Facebook. He streams it live on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash keep pace, pace facebook.com slash keep pace. So just go to his Facebook uh, website and uh, you can get that information. Um, other groups that are busy and active these days, the Breakfast Club of New Jersey still meets virtually. Uh, the group that meets on the second Saturday of the month at eight o'clock in the morning. And while they normally meet in East Brunswick, they're virtual. So do go to their website for the information, thebreakfastclubnj.com, thebreakfastclubnj.com. Uh, our presenter or their presenter is Eileen Sinet, Body Language for Job Seekers. A very terrific program. So looking forward to that program from her. And our cousin organization, PSG of Central New Jersey, uh, has a wonderful program on Monday by Lynn Williams. She's presented to us a couple of times, Beating the Applicant Tracking System, or the ATS. So she has some best practices and tips and tricks for beating the applicant tracking system. You'll want to get more information on their website, psgcnj.biz psgcnj.biz. So that's all the information that I have for all of us. I want to say once again, thank you so much, Beth. As I mentioned, you're someone who's filled with gratitude and I am so grateful right now that you continue to be a part of our group and, uh, and present, so thank you. And um, yeah, her slides are here. So if you want to contact her, uh, um, her contact information is still up. Um, her book, I do have a copy of it, The Wake Up Call, um, Daily Eye-Opening Motivation for You to Live Your Life, Your your Best, to Live Your Best Life, I'm sorry. Um, it's also available on Amazon.com, so you can find it as well. Uh, and I know hopefully soon she'll be having a book signing. 
Uh, it's been uh, postponed, unfortunately, twice due to pandemic, but I know it'll be happening soon. So that's all we have. I want to thank everyone for participating. Glad you were able to join us this week. Oh, and to let you know, I did ask about uh, were there any interviews. And so uh, Mark had an, a phone interview. David had two. And Doug is waiting for a call back for another phone interview. So people are still getting interviews. So uh, lots of good luck. So do keep active. Just because the market is a little slow doesn't mean it's a bad time to be active in the market. It's probably a very good time because everybody else thinks the market's a little slow. Be ahead of the curve there. So good luck to Mark, David, and Doug. So uh, once again, thank you, everybody. Have a good week. We hope to see you virtually next week or anywhere else on the Job Seeker Support Circuit. And just want to say goodbye, everybody.